Hi Shafiq. Hey, hi Sachi. It's been a Good it's been a while again. since I've uh, yeah it's been a while since I've done one of these sessions with you and uh, this week is a mm-hmm. rare back to back week for Stockbit. Uh, we did a session yesterday. We're doing another session today. So exciting times. Yeah, a lot of Stockbit activities. So glad that Stockbit have been through this journey right with all the investors. Yep. Uh, and thank you everyone for for joining us uh, again uh, tonight. Uh, we've got a very interesting company, um, SNS Network, who is actually a company that's going through an IPO process right now, um, and they are actually planning to list on the ACE market on the second of September. So, Shafiq, maybe without further ado, let's um, introduce uh, SNS Network. Maybe we start with a corporate presentation, and then we kick off uh, and introduce Mr. Ko after that. Sure, let's go. In Malaysia, the ICT industry is a high-performing industry that contributes to enhance the overall national productivity, where it has evolved beyond technological tools to become a socio-economic enabler and key driver of businesses. SNS Network is an ICT company founded in 1998 with Ko Yun Hung and Kelvin Pa as pioneer management team. We strive to satisfy the increasing sophisticated needs of technology-driven solutions and seamless integrated information systems to consumers, education, SME businesses, large corporations, and government institutions. SNS Network's mission is to be the leading integrated ICT provider, aiming to fully transform the offering for businesses and consumers. Providing a range of ICT infrastructure solutions, including ICT consultancy, network design with creative ICT solutions, technical support, and internet services in every industry. Since 1998, SNS Network has grown exponentially and proven its capability as a competitive and outstanding organization. We employ more than 300 well-trained professionals with a nationwide network across Malaysia. As one of the resellers recognized by most of the global brand players in the industry, we have won numerous awards and achievements. Among the prestigious awards that we have won, including SME Young Entrepreneurs, SME ICT Adoption Awards, Enterprise 50, and Malaysia's Top E-Commerce Merchant Awards. We have also been certified as an MSC Malaysia status company. Our businesses continue to expand and surpass yearly financial milestones. 500 million ringgit mark in FYE 2019. 600 million ringgit mark in FYE 2020. 700 million ringgit mark in FYE 2021. And 1 billion ringgit mark in FYE 2022. To date, SNS Network have more than 75 retail outlets across Malaysia, including their own brand store, Glue and IT World, along with authorized concept stores, partnering with reputable technology brands in the industry. Other than retail stores, ICT products are sold to customers through our self-operated online stores, namely IT World, Glue, and Notebook Plaza. In addition, we are also managing more than 30 online stores in various platforms and channels to accommodate the surge in e-commerce. Furthermore, we provide our customers the option for in-store pickup for their online purchases, besides online delivery option to their designated locations. At our selected physical stores, we have readily available Bopis, buy online, pick up in-store kiosk, where customers can easily access and retrieve their purchased products from our stores. In 2014, we launched our house brand, Joy, that offers various ICT products to the market. Joy was developed through a combined effort from industry's leading platforms and operating system, Intel and Microsoft. Our mission is to offer more choices of affordable technology devices. 
Over the years, we continue to increase our range of Joy ICT products from laptops, tablets, desktops, interactive smart boards, mobile charging stations, and related peripherals. To encourage and embrace the community towards the 21st century learning environment, SNS Network has introduced the Joy Smart Classroom that delivers high quality personalized content which blends technology into pedagogy. This makes the teaching and learn happen in an interesting way from anywhere, anytime. Joy Smart Classroom Framework is a solution provided primarily to educational institutions such as schools and universities. This solution integrates and combines a broad range of features to support effective teaching and learning, as well to implement hybrid learning with enhanced interaction and collaboration. The ICT products and services industry is expected to be continuously driven by the wide usage from the general public and businesses. ICT not only made our daily life easier, it has also caused a great transformation and nevertheless continues to break the boundaries. Hence, we aspire to build best-in-class capabilities by engaging world-leading innovative partners to provide ICT solutions for businesses and consumers. We are inspired to be committed with unconditional effort to go beyond and overcome adversity because we truly believe in our goals. Let's make life easy with technology. All right. Uh, looks like a great uh, introduction for the session that we're about to kick off with. Uh, without any further ado, maybe uh, let's invite Mr. Ko on stage. Hi, Mr. Hello, Ko. Good, good evening. evening. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Hi. Hi. Uh, yep. Th thank you so much for joining us tonight, Mr. Ko. Uh, no doubt during this very busy uh, season as you're going through the IPO process, uh, uh, no, no doubt your time is very precious and no doubt you are uh, exceptionally tired. <laughs> Um, so we really appreciate you taking the time to join us tonight uh, to speak to our uh, users and followers. And uh, we're looking forward to understand a lot more about SNS Network um, over the next hour, hour and a half. Um, so I guess, Mr. Ko, without maybe any further ado, maybe we pass the floor over to you. And uh, sure. we let you take us through an introduction and overview of the business. Sure, sure. Okay, um, so all right. um, I have shared my screen. All right, uh, yep. good evening, everyone. Thank you so much of, uh, I mean, uh, inviting me to join today's sections. I truly feel uh, very great and honored to be able to participate in the uh, webinar sessions for tonight. All right, so without further um, ado, um, let me begin with our corporate presentations. So my name is Ko Yong Hang. I'm the managing director of uh, SNS Network. And uh, SNS is co-founded by myself and my partner, Kelvin, in the year 1998. So let me share with you on our story in the ICT industry for the past 24 years. Now, actually, along the journey until today, we are supported by a group of committed, dedicated, and experienced key senior management team, which not just include myself and Kelvin, but also our executive director, Tony, we also have Miss Venus. Uh, she's the admin and operation director, which is supporting on our daily operations. We have Miss Sufen, who is actually the development director. She is playing a prominent role in our e-commerce services as well as web development core functions. And now we have Mr. Tom, who is our group financial controller. And let's have a glance at SNS Network. Um, SNS is an ICT system and solutions provider in Malaysia with 24 years of operating history. We are one of the largest uh, reseller of ICT product in Malaysia with annual sales uh, more than 1 billion ringgits. Uh, we are capable of providing end-to-end -end ICT products um, as well as, you know, uh, regardless it's from third-party brands or uh, our own house brand Joy. So we offer ICT services and solutions, device repair, upgrade as well as uh, broadband services. Um, we have very diverse customer base. Our customers range from general consumers to SME, to government, to education institutions such as school, colleges, universities, and large corporates or enterprise as well. So all our products and services are offered to our customer via three main channels. So first uh, is our physical store channel. So this is basically the place where we run all the retail activities. 
Second, it will be the online sales channel, which is offering e-commerce as well as omni channel uh, shopping experience for our customer. Third is actually our commercial channel in which we have our dedicated sales specialist or account manager to serve the commercial customer uh, needs. So for the past 24 years, we have built a very long-term and established partnership with many global brands of ICT uh, in, in the ICT industry. So these are the brands that most of us are very familiar with. For example, Intel, Microsoft, uh, Apple, AMD, HP, Lenovo, Dell, Samsung. Now, in fact, we have even won numerous awards over the years in the ICT industry. And now, let me share with you our journey. Um, we started in Epo. Uh, in 1998 as a sole providership uh, with myself and Kelvin as a pioneer management team. In year 2000, uh, we actually uh, incorporated uh, SNS and uh, Malaysia's and Grand Bahas. And then in 2004, we secured our first concession air agreement with Aeon. This actually marked our starting point in the ICT industry. And in 2007, we actually launched our first retail 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 uh, and earn many awards, not only just within our industry, but also uh, the awards, which is actually uh, from others awards accreditation uh, uh, organizations. So take for example, uh, in year 2008, uh, we earned ourselves as an SME Young Entrepreneurs Awards, uh, 2009 SME ICT Adoption Award, and also we ranked number two nationwide in Enterprise 50 Awards uh, um, and then in 2010, we launched our first retail outlet uh, brand specialty store, which is IT World. So at the time, it's mainly promo Apple products. In 2012, we launched uh, our group as our retail multi brand store. In 2014, we introduced our own house brand, uh, Joy, which is actually offering a solutions for market that demand for affordable devices. So then we moved to 2017. Uh, we start to sell online via our in-house website, IT World. So in 2010, um, uh, uh, 2021, uh, our effort in e-commerce got recognized when we won the third placing in the Malaysia's top e-commerce merchant award given by SIDAC. And uh, that is the year of uh, financial year 2022, which we break our uh, revenue record surplus uh, more than 1 billion ringgit. So let's continue with our business overview. Our principal activity are segmented into two parts. Okay, so the first activity that you can see here, which is actually um, the uh, sales of ICT hardware devices and related peripherals, as well as provision of ICT uh, services and solutions. So um, second over here is actually provisions of device repair and uh, related services, as well as sales of broadband products. So um, let's look at the left column. So we carry brands from third party and our own house brand, um, you know, which comprise uh, products like PCs, workstations, server, devices, peripherals, and even software. And uh, in addition, we also offer ICT services or, and, and solutions, either complementary, uh, when we say complementary means it's bundled together with our system or it's a value add. Uh, we also have our education solution with our Joy Smart Classroom solution framework. Uh, we offer DAS. I will elaborate a little bit more over this uh, later on. And then we have also offer managed ICT services. So all these product uh, systems, services, and solutions are market via our existing channel of a physical store, online store, as well as commercial. So then we move to the uh, other uh, portion, which is on the right and we, uh, of our second principal activities, which include, so the first portion actually is operating of Apple Authorized Service Center that provide various form of support or repair of Apple devices. Then the other part is actually offering broadband services from telco such as TM, Cellcom, and etc. We also offer our own DIA. So it stands for Dedicated Internet Access, which is brand under Crowd Assist. So this is for those customers which require a service level agreement as LA on their internet subscriptions. So all our customer segments for these principal activities are businesses, government agency, education institutions, as well as general consumers. So let's look at the new era of subscription-based IT services which is DAS, or it stands for Device as a Service. Now, this is actually a subscriptions-based 
a, a, a service uh, typically is on the monthly uh, subscriptions uh, so in which our group will be able to bundle ICT products or services to our customer so when we say uh, we will be able to bundle products um, from hardware angle this could be include like things like PCs notebooks tablets smart boards uh, workstation server and a wide range of hardware accessory as well as peripherals now uh, customer may also bundle the support together with it so this will include things like delivery configuration deployments uh, help desk management uh, even device life cycle management and on every kind of services then they can include many other things as well uh, including cloud-based software for example like microsoft antivirus and licensing management as well so our customer can choose to either directly subscribe with us or indirectly via the party leasing so now of course currently the most popular one is actually third party leasing which means customer actually have their own financial provider um, to uh, provide the solution or support for them or offering the uh, uh, financing option for them so this is usually paid uh, on a monthly basis and uh, the contract period of DAS typically can range up to five years so some customers choose three years four years or even five years now at the end of the subscription periods then it depends on customer requirement they can choose to renew the DAS contract and if they, um, they will get a new hardware so this will help customers to keep up with the rapidly advancing technology so DAS is actually very different compared to conventional computer uh, leasing or computer rental scheme so those days, uh, some conventional method is that there are people who rent computer and some of these computer could be a refurbished computer, it could be a secondhand computer. And uh, the service and support element is not there. So however, in DAS, actually, we, we, we bundle a lot of things together. It all depends on customer needs as well as requirements. So let's move on to the SNS major customer. Uh, we take uh, one of the financial year, which is financial year 2022 uh for our our uh, uh study over here so you can see our major customer is from very diversified industry so first we have fan technology who is an overseas customer then on the second and third ranking are taken by lazada and shopee e-card is actually uh, lazada and then uh shopee so these are the uh, sales contributed uh, uh that we are uh, uh, from the online team and um, all these sales are actually obtained from our online store that we actually set up uh, at their platform then on the number four ranking we have Pembangunan Leasing Corporation Sandram Bahad which is fully owned by Malaysia's Development Bank um, they are offering financial services for our DAS customer and on the fifth rank we have Pejabat Setia Usaha Kerajaan Negeri Johor who is buying uh, purchasing laptops networking items from us so let's look at the another table so this is at the major customer that is uh, under the category of provisions of uh, apple device repair and related services as well as sales of broadband so as far as broadband sales is concerned telecom malaysia is the uh, largest uh, telco that we have in malaysia that's why you can see telecom uh, rank number one on the top because we are offering the products unified to the consumers and businesses so the sales activity that we carry out uh, 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 for tm you know is via our multiple channels so that means we promote the product for example in the kiosk in retail outlets in mobile vehicle robots program and even a door-to-door -door, uh, uh, by our agents so moving next uh, on the chart is actually we have second and third rank uh, which is taken by bright star and asura which we are providing our repair and support um, services on for apple product to them then uh going down we have uh, uh rank number four and five which is international rescue committee and protect now these are our dia uh, service subscriber of cloud access so dia as i shared just now is set for direct internet access now you see the internet uh, broadband subscription actually there is uh, uh, uh differences um those broadband package that we have let's say from unify or from cell Take for example those are offered uh, uh, based on best effort basis so take for example you subscribe for 100 max so on best effort basis they try to give you 100 max but it doesn't guarantee you or it doesn't ensure you you would 100 max but for for some customer they may have very critical server cry environment and maybe internet connection for them is critical they required 
a, a, a higher level of service level agreement, then for this group of customer, we will offer direct internet access to them. So in which I'll take for example, for this case, we are offering a minimum of 99.5% guaranteed internet uptime with dedicated fiber optic pair to the crowd assist customer. So in which they will be able to mitigate the risk of uh, internet disconnections. All right, so if any of you want, ever wonder how we created our impressive track records, now let me unpacking our competitive strengths to you. First, I think we offer extensive range of ICT products and services. We have offered more than 30,000 SKU from third-party branded products. Now, these are all the very familiar names that you always heard about. For example, it's Apple, AMD, HP, Intel, Microsoft, Samsung, and etc. And uh, not only that, we also build our own brand, Joy. So currently, we have about 360 uh, SKU of uh, Joy. Okay. Now, however, we are not just about selling the bosses as it is. Uh, if our customer required, we also provide complementary or very added service and solution. Now, take for example, in education, we have joint smart classroom solution framework to help institutions in the education uh, transformations. We offer flexible technology adoptions uh, via our DAS model, and we also provide managed ICT services or maintenance contract for customers who request for it. Um, in addition, we are Apple authorized service provider. So currently we are operating three service centers that is capable of providing uh, repair as well as uh, related services on all the uh, Apple products. And as shared previously, we also provide various internet subscription service from different telco like TM or Cellcom. Uh, we have established history and proven track records. Being started uh, at a small city of Malaysia, Ipoh, and uh, moreover, Ipoh typically is not famous for technology. Now, despite all these challenges, we have, we have marked our success in this world's most dynamic ICT industry for the past 24 years. And we believe this kind of experience will enable us to be competitive and to be able to continuously improve ourselves moving forwards. So over the years, we have established a wide market coverage and extensive distribution channel nationwide. We have uh, 56 specialty store, seven multi-brand concept store, and 14 consignment counter inside your departmental store. So this statistic is as of uh, 30th April of 2022. Now, other than the brick and mortar store, we also promote our products um, uh, um, through the on online uh, channel as well. So currently, we are managing more than 30 e-store, which are available on our own website and platform, uh, such as Lazada, Shopee, Zarora, and etc. So furthermore, uh, at certain selected outlets, certain locations, we are offering our customers the option of buy online, pick up in store, or in short form, we call it bookies to enable the omni-channel shopping experience. SNS has established long terms and solid business relationship with brand principal, distributors, suppliers, and OEM. So from all these global brands that you can see here, uh, most of them, we have been working with them more than 10 years and some are even more than 20 years. And uh, we really need to thank them and appreciate their support all this while. So let's move a little bit and let's have a look at our, our own house brand, Joy. So what happened actually is in year 2014, Intel and Microsoft, both of them approached us simultaneously about the same time. And they told us about a gap in the market product offering something is missing and the, the, the this missing part is actually about the affordable devices so i still remember uh when we launched our first joy um eight inch uh, windows based tablet come with the microsoft uh, operating system windows uh which is only retailing at rm 499. Uh, we have achieved very encouraging results from customer um, affordable devices are in need for many families, especially for the education purposes, because they're using this device as a first device for their children. And this actually motivates us to continue on. So until today, uh, our joint products range uh, from desktop, laptop, content media servers, tablets, interactive smart board, uh, mobile charging stations, and some related peripherals as well as components. And now we further enhance our offering with the introduction of Joy Smart Classroom Solution Framework in 2016. Uh, SNS actively uh, involved in demonstrations and uh, illustrations uh, to different schools, 
colleges and university on how to brand technology into pedagogy, which makes the teaching and learning more interactive and more interesting at any time and anywhere. So from there, let's talk a little bit about our strategy and our plans moving forwards. Um, first, we will construct a regional hub located at PJ to support the nationwide expansion. And this hub will be an 18-story building with a build-out area about uh, 260,000 square feet, including car parks. Um, the regional hub will include experience center for us to showcase the new and innovative ICT solution uh, on the Internet of Things, such as smart homes, smart retail, smart education, smart signage, smart showering, and etc. Because um, nowadays we have been talking about like AI, we talk about big data, we talk about cloud computing, and all these things. And uh, 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 there, there is a lot of things you need to connect together with you know, Internet of Things, uh, all these things need to be integrated together. So sometimes um, it's not easy for a customer to understand uh, how does this actually uh, happen, for example. So from there, um, we want to set up this hub. Actually, there will be a sale gallery for us to demonstrate all these uh, different types of solutions uh, for them, for customer to actually really understand. Uh, we'll be able to see uh, how does this actually uh, going to be used. So, of course, um, the building will also have storage facilities, service centers, live video area, training center, workshop, and office facilities. So next, um, let me talk a little bit about DAS again. Uh, we will look at our largest IPO process to grow the DAS business. Um, since year two, uh, 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 2020 up to 30th April 2022, SNS have entered into 77 DAS subscriptions with a total subscription value of 235 million. Um, based on the independent market research reports uh, by Smith Center, uh, DAS is showing a four years of cable growth of 38.6% uh, in Malaysia. So SNS will be purchasing products like desktop, laptop, smart board or workstation, a printer, server, and so on to support the expansion of these uh, um, DAS businesses. And the next, uh, we will continue to expand our retail operation. Uh, we um, target to set up another 10 new retail stores, particularly in Cran Valley, Johor, and Penang. So um, uh, we estimated we budget uh, uh, about 250000 per outlet, so 10 outlet in the um, um, uh, spend a budget of 2.5 million. Um, we believe Joy actually have many, many growth opportunities. Now, however, however, it may not be very well known to the public uh, due to the insufficient marketing activity that we have previously. Uh, we are local company, Joy is a Malaysian brand. We know we don't have luxury budgets like big MSC companies to spend on their AMP. Uh, nevertheless, we will continue to invest more to enhance our brand and product awareness to various marketing activity. So this activity um, will include like social media, <coughs> engagement with KOL, advertisement in digital website, search engine, radio broadcast, and etc. So in a nutshell, I would like to say is that there are very positive outlook for the ICT products as well as services industry. There are a lot of catalysts and a lot of factors that continue to drive um, the demand and the growth for new ICT products as well as services. So maybe let me name a few factors over here. Uh, to share with you. First, um, after the digital transformation is accelerated during the pandemic time, we can see there is a wide usage of ICT products and services nowadays. Now, second, so with higher adoption of technology into our daily life, there will be a replacement cycle of devices and continuous technology advancement. So third, I think our government is also putting a lot of effort to build out the digital economies. For example, the implementations of government initiative for 5G, various digital transformation programs that they have done. Uh, and, and this is actually even before the pandemic times, we already talk about, you know, uh, IR 4.0 and all these things bring the uh, business to digital and so on. And uh, of course, uh, the last one I would like to share is, um, you know, uh, among the factors that, 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 that continue to drive the industry, um, it will be like, you know, online learning, hybrid learning, all these are no longer something unusual. In fact, it's part of the new norm. So incorporation of ICT um, to promote digital education in school of Malaysia has in fact transformed the landscape of education uh, sectors. Um, 
and even even like for tonight the session that we have so you know virtual session so now actually become uh, pretty common as one of the alternative you know online learning hybrid learning uh, working and all these things so sometimes we can have our event face to face the physical event sometimes we can have a virtual event and sometimes we can have a hybrid event so tonight we are having our virtual events okay so from there let's move into financial highlights uh, we have very strong year on year top line as well as earning growth our revenue as you can see actually grow from 594 millions in fy 2019 to 675 in FY 2020 to RM 721 million in FY uh, 2021. Then finally, uh, our sales uh, for FY 2022 is RM 1.1 billion. So our profit after, after tax for uh, financial year 2022 is 35.9 million. And uh, let's have a look uh, on the performance by segmentations. Our sales of ICT product segments is contributing about 98% to 98.9% .9 of our total revenue. Whereas the segmentation of provision of device repair as well as related services as well as propane uh, is, contribu uh, is contributing from 1.1% uh, to 2%. So as geographical is concerned, you can see here Malaysia actually uh, is our larger ma largest uh, market share. So we've, uh, our, our contribution from Malaysia is 89.3% for FY2021 and uh, it is 86.2% um, in FY2022. And uh, let's have a look at the sales channel comparison. So commercial channel um, uh, is to fill the growth of our company. As you can see, is uh, the commercial channel over here is contributing uh, more than 17% of our total revenue all this year. So our physical store contribution is ranging from 14.3% to 18.5%. And our online store channel recorded the highest contribution in FY2022 at 10.9%. And our services, are, as we shared just now, is the smallest channel contribution, only from 1.1% to 2%. Uh, we have very strong uh, balance sheet. Uh, our total asset as well as shareholder equity has increased from the financial year of 2020 until uh, FY2022. So our FD cash bank balances subsequently will increase to 44.6 million after this thing. Our total borrowing will be reduced to uh, 30 million after this thing. And after this thing, our current ratio will be improved to 1.47 times, whereas our gearing ratio will be reduced to 0 0.17 times. So last but not least, I'm excited to share with you uh, about our IPO summaries. So this is our group structure pre-IPO. And this will be our group structure post-IPO, in which all the subsidiaries will be fully owned by SNS Technology Berhad. We will have 3% uh, for ping pong allocations. Then uh, Malaysia Public as well as selected investor will be another 22.5%. So this will bring our public spread to 25.5%. Uh, this will be our IPO offering structure. So based on financial year 2022, our IPO price will be RM uh, 0.25 cents per unit of share with a total market capitalization of 403.2 uh, million ringgits. Um, let's have a look uh, on our utilization of proceeds. So 33.4 million will be our capex uh, cap capital expenditure, in which 30.9 million will be used for the expansion of DAS as what we shared just now. And uh, we are going to spend 2.5 million to set up 10 retail uh, new retail outlets. Uh, we'll be using 20 million to repay bank borrowings, 1.5 million, which is approximately 500,000 a year. And uh, so we are going to spend 1.5 million for three years uh, for the marketing activities for Troy. Uh, we will be using the team point one for general work cap, 4.7 for the listing exercise expenses, as well as 18 million um, to fund uh, partially for the construction of the regional hubs. So from there, uh, this is our tentative dates for the IP also be targeted to list on East Market uh, uh, on 2nd of September. So uh, with all this, I'm coming to the end and I would like to uh, pass the session over to Sachi and Shafiq. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ko. Uh, I thought it was uh, fantastic covering so much of the business. Uh, and I think there are definitely certain parts of the business that 
um, I want to kind of like double click into um, one one very uh, spectacular thing was uh, the fifty four percent revenue growth year on year. Um, I think the finances will come to it later. Um, okay. But maybe Mr. Ko, just to start off the session, um, I'm always very interested in meeting entrepreneurs and uh, founders of businesses, and uh, very interested to listen to your origin story and you know what 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 made you start the business and the evolution of the business over the years. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I, I think that is a, a, a very great question. Um, um, actually, um, um, myself and Kelvin, actually, after we complete our study, I was actually from uh, uh, my background, I'm actually a mechanical, uh, I hold a mechanical uh, engineering degree uh, from USM. So, uh, and then my partner, he's actually got, uh, uh, he's doing his computer science in Ta College. So, um, um, so that that when the time that we come up, that is the time that uh, after nineteen ninety seven, I think economic crisis, something like that. So, but uh, I, I as a mechanical engineer, uh, um, in fact, um, there's not much impact for me, uh, because uh, I saw most of my senior uh, actually working in the factory or working in the consultation line. So, um, um, as a mechanical engineer, actually, basically our career path is um, quite pretty predictable. You know, you start as an engineer, later on maybe become senior engineer, and perhaps you become a uh, department manager and so on. So it's nothing wrong with that. But um, um, so at the time, I, I was just thinking maybe I, I, I can have something different. So I would like to try some different journey. And uh, of course, uh, at that time, we have quite a keen interest in the I, IT industry because it's something new. So so then I myself and Kelvin, we actually uh, thinking of, uh, you know, uh, maybe we can come out to do something on that. So, um, of course, in the early beginning, we are one of the few community that actually do uh, networking. So, um, networking will mean to say is uh, we are providing, you know, like uh, uh, a set up local area network. So, uh, I'm not too sure about you, Sachi. So, those days, actually, a lot of computers are standalone. Uh, it's not like us today, uh, you know, we, a lot of our computers are actually able to uh, link up together. So those days, actually, we are using dial up more than 56k dial up more than, and then uh, you know uh, TMNet or or Jaring 151 or 155, in which they charge you by your the, the data usage, and uh, so a lot of time is that uh one computer then you hold out to one in internet so that kind of scenario. So uh, because at that time networking is not common, then we 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 start to do like network all the computer in the local area network environment whereby they will be able to do file and print sharing they can share the printer they can share the file and then at the same time then they can actually share the internet so that is a little bit of uh, uh, differences that we are uh, trying to do um in fact um uh, some people even ask me uh what does sms stand for so sms actually stands for system network solutions so what is actually system? System is basically we are talking about you know everything to today that we have whether it's a computer system or whatever system you know post system we could be talking about a, a graphic design system a retail system a education system smart classroom all this is a kind of system so system is something that form the basic and foundation tier then after that you have the system you need to link it up together in a network so the the linking our network is whether it's a local area now or wide area now but like, like today we do a lot of internet uh today we actually being linked up uh via different kind of apps together so that is the second level net, network then the third thing to move out is actually solution because ultimately what customer need is the solutions so think for example now we have all the computer system then we link up in the network which is provided by unify and the solutions is we are having our virtual meetings. Then we have another network at the behind SNS network. The behind network is actually uh, referring to um, uh, uh, what we call this uh, interpersonal uh, uh, human network. So uh, what we meant by human network is basically we are we are uh, we believe in partnership, and that's why in our very early days we have been working with all the various different brands people like Intel, Microsoft, and so on, because we believe in partnership. Uh, in ICT industry, uh, there is a lot of uh, different types of solutions and products. And sometimes it's not just about the product itself as a box, but it is about how you're going to use it. It's how about you, you are going to integrate it, and eventually it will be able to form all the various different things. 
Um, I'm very sorry, Sachi. I'm not too sure whether I speak too much and taking too much of your time, but sometimes uh, this is like uh, old day story, so I can just share a little bit with you. Ho hopefully, no, no, I, 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 I your questions. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you, you definitely did. Um, of course, for me, I think, uh, especially in a business that's been around for 23, 24 years, uh, and you being the founder of the business from, from the start, um, because always very interesting to see what were the motivations for the business to start and also like um, the business today is no doubt very different to what you started all those years ago, right? So to me, just uh, understanding the evolution of the business is always very interesting. Uh, so thank you for sharing. Um, okay, I think sure. maybe uh, Shafiq, I pass it over to you, Shafiq, for a question. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, maybe thank you for the background introduction because uh, it's very great view about uh, how IT works, right? Um, so let's go straight to the business uh, and talk okay. about joy, right? So we have in the, among the audience here is, you know, fan of joy. So maybe you can tell us more about this brand, right? Um, and wh what is the benefit, uh, for the benefit of our audience, right? Can you tell more about this brand? Oh, okay, sure, sure, sure. I would like to, I would love to talk about um, um, this. Um, you see, um, it's not easy to have our own brands in the ICT industry because um, the position of it is very important. So uh, I share my story just now actually about uh, Joy is actually in the year of 2014, uh, whereby Intel and Microsoft, both of them actually talked to us uh, simultaneously about the same time and they told us about a, a, a missing gap in the market in which is actually about affordable devices. So uh, what actually happens? Now, if we look at the landscape, those days and today actually it's almost similar. Now, um, uh, I pick one of the product, let's say notebook. Now, uh, let's say uh, as far as notebook is concerned, we have very premium segments, it's usually occupied by Apple, for example, right? So Apple is playing the premium segments. Then you have the mainstream segments which is all the uh, brands like Acer, Dell, Asus, Lenovo, HP, you know, IBM and so on. So they are in the mainstream segment. So they could be selling the price point from like 2005 to 3005, that kind of price range. Then after that, if you're looking for something below 1005, your selection is actually quite limited. So same thing happens actually to tablets, for example. Uh, those days in 2014, you have very premium products like Apple iPad, then you have Samsung Galaxy Tab uh, on, on the Android platform, and after that, you don't have much choice. And uh, this kind of scenario to an industry player, I think it is not very good because um, um, there are some, um, we take for example, actually, Joy, actually, uh, one of the uh, uh, um, I mean, the potential is actually in education. Now, what happens is that, you know, in Malaysia, we take, for example, the B40 family groups. A lot of parents, actually, they want to buy some device for their children. But sometimes, due to the income level, they are unable to, you know, uh, purchase uh, the products because there's no selections in the market. So what we do, actually, we are trying to position a complete product portfolio. So if you have the budget, you want premium product like Apple, Samsung, or whatever, you go ahead. Or you want to go for mainstream products like HP, Dell, Lenovo, and so on, it's not a problem. But if let's say your budget really limited, but yet you want to start with something, then we have to join. So what will happen, take for example, you, need, you see, uh, uh, during the pandemic times, uh, one of the challenges that, that uh, 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 a lot of family face is because, you know, last time they may have one computer shared by the whole family. Am I right? So, but, but after you have this, uh, what we call um, um, online learning and so on, then you notice that you can't really share your computers because all the kids need to go online and to study. So how are you going to share your computer? So everyone needs one unit. So it's creating a, a, a burden to the family because they are unable to do it when the, the market is that they, they, there's no affordable devices available for them. So what we are trying to do, we are trying to come up something basic, something entry level for them. To us, we believe technology adoptions is actually a journey. It's not a one-off thing. Um, I think it's not like you buy a computer, then you, you can use for 50 years or you use 20 years, something like It's not the case, right? Every three years, five years, you may need to upgrade again. So let's imagine a certain family, let's say the kids now is a standard one or two or three, something like that. 
Maybe they can start with something basic, something affordable. After three, five years, they could be in like standard five or standard six. Then they could have upgrade uh, to a more powerful machine. Or maybe when they move to secondary school, they can get a more powerful machine. And later on, when they come to form five or form six, or when they go to college to pursue diploma, they can, they can get another more powerful unit. For example, every three, five years, they will be able to upgrade along the line. So I think we as a technology provider, our responsibility is to provide the choices for customers so that they are not being left out in the technology transformation process. So this is uh, something that we think uh, what we are trying to do. Okay, so for example, uh, we, we even enhance our offering to come up with the Joy Smart Classroom Solution Framework. So although the name is Joy Smart Classroom Solution Framework, but actually it works equally well with any brands. So what we do is we, we notice one of the common problems of a lot of school in Malaysia is that um, every school has different level of um, skill and readiness. You know, some school, they may have more budget, they may have more equipment with them. Some school, maybe the teacher is not so ready. They don't have too much resources. So different schools have different types of challenge and they do not know how to set up, for example, smart classroom. We talk about 21st century learning. We talk about how to make our children more 4C capable, for example. But then how are we going to transform our education? Actually, this thing is there way before pandemic time happens. So then that's why we come out of a framework. It's basically like a recipe, how we are going to configure all the different types of things uh, all together. So, and why, why we use Joy as an illustration? Because Joy is an affordable product. So if an entry-level product, uh, an affordable product, product can deliver that kind of experience. Now, if the school have more budget, they want to go for their HP or whatever brands they want, or even including apples, we are more than happy to help them to set up the smart classroom for them. So that is uh, the, the, the something that actually, you know, um, continue to keep us um, uh, feel motivated uh, to continue to build our own brands. But um, we are definitely not creating uh, joy to compete with the MNC brand. But in fact, what we are doing, we are completing all the product portfolio for the customers. Yeah, Shafiq, uh, I hope I answer your questions. Yeah, definitely. That, that is a great answer. And it's very noble, uh, I guess, like noble, noble task, right, to deliver all this IT solution for everyone, right? Um, having said that, um, are you going to, uh, are Joy going to stay as affordable um, products or what is your ambition for Joy? Do you also want to cater different target market? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that is a very good question. Of course, uh, on, on products like desktop, laptop, tablets, and all this, usually we are actually uh, maintaining it as affordable US. And of course, you see we have some interactive smart board. So those are affordable in a way, but uh, uh, because compared to the big brands. So, so but this is very um, uh, vertical usage. Like interactive smart board is being used in the education as a teacher device for teacher to, to, to replace the so-called the traditional uh, whiteboard or maybe to replace the projector, okay? Uh, other than that, then, then uh, uh, um, it can be used in the uh, businesses as a conferencing uh, uh, device, for example. So these are some of, uh, of the affordable options. So it's not just purely about uh, the, the hardware or the device itself, but it's actually about, you know, what are the different types of things that we can do, yeah. But I think Joy, uh, for the Pine DA, we are still positioning it. And uh, we, 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 we think that they, this affordable market, actually, there's a lot of potential. And uh, uh, it is a first device for many children. And uh, actually, um, it, it motivates a lot, actually, when, when we see you know, some of the kids, they have something to start with. Yeah, great, great answer. Maybe you pass to Sachik. Um, all right. Thanks, Shafiq. Uh, actually, Mr. Ko, on, on Joy, uh, just listening to you, I was just thinking back to my uh, time as a student many, many years ago now, right? And I was in what was a, a, a smart school, supposedly a smart school. Um, I don't remember a lot of things being very smart about it. Uh, we, we just didn't have the technology that we have today. So great to see that, uh, you know, you're actually playing in the space and um, focus on providing these low-cost solutions to make it affordable for for. Um, I think families as well as to make uh, tech enabled in a classroom setting. So great to see that. Um, Thank so you so much. Maybe to, yeah. 
So, so maybe just to move on and shift gears a little bit, uh, I think the next kind of like segment that we wanted to cover is actually about uh, DAAS. So hmm. maybe just to start off, right, Mr. Ko, for the benefit of the audience, uh, what does DAAS stand for and how is that different from traditional leasing? Okay, um, um, okay, so DAS is stand for device as a service. Now, although the name uh, 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 device is there, but actually when it comes to the real usage, um, many times customer is not just wanting the device. Sometimes, for example, you, you, you buy a phone. Why do you buy a phone? You don't need a phone, but you need to be connected because you want to um, communications so the reason why you don't want a phone because of communication so called communication is actually your objective you want to stay connected using whatsapp or whatever it is so for example using notebook why do you want to use a notebook maybe it's for your work maybe you want to do powerpoint presentation or perhaps you want to do uh, your accounting and so on so the objective of technology acquisition become the primary one so sometimes divide as a service the main objective over here is actually not just renting the computer because renting computer is just basically a hardware kind of things but end of the day it may not achieve what customer want so most of the time uh, our device as a service the flexibility over here is that most of the time we actually talk to our customer we understand their requirements why are they actually looking for device so for example maybe um, um take for example maybe let's say it's a banking industry and uh, perhaps uh, uh before pandemic times, actually a lot of people, the bank system must remain in the office. You can't bring home because they worry about the uh, you know uh, intrusion and the access uh, from outside uh, may may cause leakage and so on. But when it comes to the pandemic time, then they need to enable to allow their staff to bring the notebooks and also that they can work from home and so on. So there is change of policy, and then when they have different types of notebook, then there is different things that they, they need to set up. So. From there, they will require different kind of service level agreement. They require different kind of software. So what will happen is that basically all these things will be bundled together and it becomes a solution for the customer. Then we break it down into subscription-based model for them. And uh, a lot of customers actually, they are working, they already have many uh, financial provider uh, because DAS for the time being is actually, uh, well, we are actually targeting at those like MNC company, PLC company, uh, I mean, MSC company or public listed company, all governments. So we, we are not really offering DAS to general public or consumers or, or maybe small medium businesses. So usually we offer for uh, this kind of large, uh, large account uh, 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 clients because their scenario in the ICT usage is actually much complicated. So, so from there, that is why they will come in to have various things bundled together uh, under a subscription model. So some of them, they will already have their existing bankers to provide the support in terms of the leasing part. And we go in, we go in to settle all the IT things. So the, 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 the leasing part, the financing part, sometimes is being covered by all the bankers. Yeah. So um, this is uh, uh, what I meant by the uh, DAS. And um, uh, some customer, uh, another advantage is that at the end of the contract, so usually it's three to five years kind of thing. So, and, and you know, sometimes IT, you may need to upgrade your, your, your hardware every three to five years. So what the customer will do that at the end of the contract, they may uh, ask us to quote them again, then uh, for new selections of hardware, then they sign up a new package, then they will get the new uh, hardware to work on. So, um, you see, after the uh, uh, two years of pandemic time, um, suddenly there's a lot of digital users. So when they go back to the uh, company, go back to work that time, then they realize a lot of their ICT infrastructure is actually uh, outdated. So that is why DAS will be one of the uh, methods uh, that can acquire the technology. So uh, again, it's another choice, right? So we always believe in choices uh, for the customer. Um, you not just only outright purchase, but other than the outright purchase, you can also consider uh, DAS. Um, similar concept to SAS software as a service, like today we are using Microsoft O365, for example. Now, if you think back a few years ago, actually there's no such options. If you want to buy Microsoft, you only have perpetual licensing methods. That means you buy, let's say uh, this is uh, um, uh, Office 2000, let's say, for example. Then when they come out Office 2008, 
you, you have to pay money to buy again. So that kind of model. So, so but, but nowadays, we are very familiar with monthly subscriptions or yearly subscription methods on the software. So that as long as subscribing the software, when it's a new version, updated version, you are entitled to use it. So something like that, yeah. So that now actually happened to the hardware as well. Thank you, Sachi. Okay, understand. Uh, and then Mr. Ko, there's actually just a question from uh, the audience, so from Uramia. Um, so he's actually asking when companies just buy the device outright other, uh, instead of using DAS. Um, um, uh, actually, they, they, they spoke, uh, both uh, also is doing, um, sometimes customers actually just, just purchase a product. There are also customers who like to go for DAS. It all depends on customer, uh, their, their intention, what they want. So there is um, um, no, no uh, I mean, it is an option for the customer anyway. Yeah. Okay, okay, understand. Um, and then uh, I actually had a, a follow up question. Um, okay. So when with the DAS uh, model, right, is it uh, specific to only your know, joy products or also do you use it for the brands that you carry or uh, is it only exclusive to the brands that you carry? Is there any differentiation? Uh, um, we, 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 we actually quite brands neutral. We, we are okay with any brands. Uh, not necessarily must be joy, no. Um, no. We, we don't hard sell uh, or, or, or push customers to must buy joy or buy any specific brand. Uh, to us, actually, more important is the customer needs and what is their requirements uh, uh, more than brands itself. <laughs> of course, if let's say customer insists on certain brands, and uh, as far as that also achieve the objective, we are fine. So um, DS for us, we are working well with any product offerings that we have. And I believe we have <coughs> extensive range of products. As I shared just now, we have more than 30,000 SKU. So I believe we almost have everything that the customer may want. And then it's not difficult for them to actually uh, use the DAS model to adopt it and not, not to acquire the te uh, technological products. Yeah. Okay, understand. Um, and then uh, just, a, I guess, a follow-up question on the model, right? So in a DAS model scenario, basically, uh, you give me the product and then I pay a monthly subscription for whatever, like, three years, five years. Uh, I guess it's different by different types of products uh, based on the life cycle. And in in that period, effectively, you kind of take on a risk, right? Uh, I guess credit risk because uh, what, what happens if the company doesn't pay you? How do you actually manage that type of uh, risk? And has there been any instances of uh, maybe a company, uh, especially over the pandemic, right? Maybe a client of yours has uh, gone under or not been able to pay. How do you handle that? Oh, this is a very good question. So um, uh, let me share with you. Uh, uh, as I said, the sound DS actually have two models. One is direct subscriptions model, another one is actually go through the third party uh, leasing methods. So currently, the direct subscriptions model we are actually uh, for uh, companies, uh, uh, big companies like MNC or PLC or governments, or or maybe some uh, education institutions. So we are uh, because the funding that we have is very limited, so it's very selective kind of customer. And uh, all the others, we are actually working with the third-party leasing provider company because I think our core strength, we are not financing company, we are not bank. So we are not here to compete with bank. In fact, we, we, we can't compete with bank because our strength is IT. So we are working with all the various brands to offer the financing solution to the customer. And many customers actually, they have their own solutions on the financing part. So. Uh, only certain cases, uh, 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 the, the, the client that we have under direct subscriptions for the time being is all government, uh, uh, actually uh, government uh, a, uh, agency. So we don't really have uh, these uh, credit risk. So this is okay. how we mitigate that kind of uh, uh, things like you say, like, you know, maybe I have problem on collections, I cannot collect back and things like that. So because our direct model is only meant for this group of uh, targeted customers. Okay, so if I summarize, uh, the direct model, you only service a particular set of clients so that it's uh, the risk is managed. And then uh, in the other scenario, you need to, you rely on the leasing or the leasing company best the risk. Like you basically de-risk yourself. Yeah, yeah. So because then the, the, the so, so we will be able to have all types of customers. So let's say now uh, company ABC approaches, then they may be working with, let's say SME Bank or Bank Rakyat or Bank Islam or whatever bank it is. 
So uh, um, then if let's say Bank Islam uh, were to uh, provide the support to them, then we, we will be able to work together. So to us, that is actually perfectly fine. And, and, and we believe our job is actually in the IT. We, we are not here to compete with Bank. So, so there is no conflict at all. And then in fact, Bank, Bank is actually one of the good partners. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then when you work together with banks, uh, presumably your margins will be slightly thinner because the banks will take a cut out of the, the, the transaction right, for providing you that uh, de-risking, the benefit of de-risking. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't catch you. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, Sachin, you want to repeat? Sure. Sorry. Uh, what I meant was basically, uh, I'm guessing that the margins for your leasing model for DAS will be slightly thinner than the margins for direct because uh, you are relying on a third party to um, provide the leasing, right? They provide the financing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, the, the direct model will be higher. The, the indirect model, uh, which is for the third party leasing, uh, the margin will be slower. I mean, uh, will be thinner. But overall, the DAS will be able to demand a higher margin because uh, we are bundling a lot of uh, other things into it. So usually, customers will bundle a few things into it, like extended warranty, um, you know, uh, service maintenance contract, and something like that. So uh, overall margin will be bring out. But if you compare these two models, of course, the direct model will be able to earn higher margin. Okay, uh, sounds. Um, I think I hogged enough of the floor. Maybe Shafiq, uh, back to you, Shafiq. Hello. Okay, so um, I have a question about DAS, uh, DAS also. Uh, how do you compete yeah. with other brands DAS? Because uh, as we know, other brands like Dell, HP, they also have provided services, right? And how to do that while maintaining like a good profit margin? Oh, okay. Very, very good question, Shafiq. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, it is true. Uh, um, most of the uh, ICT company, uh, you know, uh, especially like Dell, HP, all these, they also provide uh, uh, some of these uh, DAS services. So I guess our difference is um, usually the brands, take for example, let's say uh, if the service is offered by Dell, usually they are more um, focusing on the Dell product range. Uh, not so much on other things that is not uh, inside the Dell product portfolio, usually. But to SNS, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, as far as the ICT whole infrastructure is required, you can have Dell computers and then you can be using HP server. You could be using Canon printers. You could be using Cisco router and everything. You know, all these things go together in the network. So our job, actually, we are not so particular about what is the brand. But usually, if you talk about ICT companies, sometimes I think the, the, the product range and product portfolio is different. So they are, uh, actually, they're coming in strong. Maybe it's more focused on their product portfolio. So they won't go to too extra mile uh, on non dell related products. Yeah, uh, do you get what I'm trying to say? So... So on our part, in, in fact, then we are different. So we, 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 we look at, you know, sometimes customers, they, they may need a projector from BankQ, you know? So, uh, and, and they could be using their notebooks, for example. That is actually perfectly fine with us. Or maybe they even review a view Sony in the Epic Smartboard uh, on that uh, HP computers. That is no problem for us as well. And it could be a server as well. So all these things to us, the most important is to set up the things um, and, and configure and deploy for the customers to, in, uh, achieve their objective. So that is actually our common goal. All right, the, and this is follow-up question. Um, I understand that DAS uh, is a device, is a service for device, right, hardware. Yes, But yes. how does it work with software? Like, can you give us examples so that the audience, which is more a public investor here can understand? Okay, 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 sure. Now, um, a lot of software also is actually uh, already on the subscription modes, uh, which is, we call it uh, software as a service or SaaS. SAS. So, uh, take for example, Microsoft is actually one of them. So, um, uh, Microsoft, uh, M365, O365, a lot of these actually on the subscription basis. And now uh, we know very well, sometimes device itself is basically a piece of hardware. So, if without software, then it cannot run very well. So basically what happened is that uh, no matter uh, what we talk about, we talk about AI, we talk about big data, we talk about cloud computing, end of the day, you need an edge computing devices, whether it's a PC or notebooks or smartphone and so on. So then 
after you have the notebook, you need the software. You want you want to use the software, you need the hardware. So both these things have to work together. So sometimes customers do not want to separate these two things. Rather, they actually put all the things together into one plan. So that is why it's known as a DAS plan. So sometimes it will include things like uh, uh, office, for example, things like antivirus, for example, all the cybersecurity. Uh, cybersecurity is also something critical. Uh, it's not just antivirus for the notebook uh, and PC. Those are quite simple and straightforward. But there are customers actually looking into like cybersecurity solutions, for example, uh, to protect their server. Uh, it could be a firewall uh, to protect their network. And it could be all the various different types of solutions that they want. So then we, we will be able to see uh, what other things they need. So maybe it's a firewall and a firewall, it could be both hardware and software based so that uh, it, it will enhance their organization's uh, um, uh, uh, security. Um, because I think one of the challenges is that the more you have all this equipment, but on the, on, on the same time, um, you have to make sure it is also secure. And uh, uh, some customer uh, also includes other productivity suites, so for example, like you know Adobe, uh, they also include uh, together. So that is how why software uh, also sometimes go into the DAS, although the name DAS is supposed to be only device. But as I say, just hardware it cannot function well. Only software without hardware also it cannot. So you need to put these two guys together. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's abundant together. All right. Yes, yes, and correct, correct. As you mentioned in your slide, right, that DAS has grown significantly. So where's the driver for this growth? Um, um, oh, yeah. oh, okay. So um, according to the uh, IMR report by Smith Sanders, so um, DAS is showing uh, uh, four years of uh, Kager growth of 38.6%. So um, you see, um, uh, one of the challenges is that uh, um, slowly when there is more device, a lot of organizations, they acquire a lot of technology products and all this. And later on, they realize actually service and support is also one of the elements that is needed. Because sometimes the products will go wrong, regardless what is the brand. Like. And that's why we operate service center and all these things. So, and, and sometimes when the device goes wrong, then the customer, you, you see, when you adopt a lot of products, you, you start to like relying on the products. And later on, when the product or problem, then you become like, oh, yeah, you know, you are, you are stuck. Like. So then what, what, what we, we, we need is that uh, uh, they will need, you know, managed ICT services and all, all different kinds of service support plan. Uh, depends on what is the, the resources that they have. You know, some customers, they have their in-house uh, uh, IT department, then maybe they don't have to rely so much on outside. So that's why uh, I say our BAS approach is actually very flexible. It depends on customer uh, scenario. In the very early beginning, we do uh, try to come up package but uh, I think the package idea cannot work for DAS because all the customer, every customer is unique, every customer is different. So we can't just sell package like 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 McDonald, Ready Meal, something like that. We can't. Almost every time customer want a la carte. And uh, to us is that is actually perfectly fine. That's okay. That is in fact our strength. So we would like to we love talking to customer. We love to go to their, their situation and see how we can solve uh, various issues that they have. And uh, uh, I think that is the value of uh, ourselves as a technology provider. All right, last question from me uh, about DAS, right? Um, sorry, it's not from me, it's from, from the floor. Right? So how is your DAS business currently? This is important because this is a recurring income uh, every year, right? So uh, the margin should be healthy, right, for this one. And he asking this uh, for the part of without the initial hardware sales, right? Maybe you can answer this question. Okay. Thank you so much for the questions. Um, uh, we don't really break down the DAS segments, but DAS is actually part of our commercial sales channel. So as I mentioned actually earlier in my slide, commercial is con uh, contributing more than 70% of, of our total group revenue. And DAS is part of it. Um, we do have the, the, the number that we have uh, from year 2020 when we st start offering this uh, until 30th of April. Uh, we have secured 77 DAS subscriptions contracts, and uh, this is amounting to 235 million. So, and of course, um, uh, DAS tends to have a better margin as compared to normal uh, upright sales. 
Um, because usually uh, we notice that our customer is not purely just buying the products. Most of our customer actually have certain level of bundle together. So whether it's some software they bundle together or maybe they bundle some service and something like that. It's um, uh, quite seldom customer purely purchase the hardware uh, and then just go for the, the normal leasing uh, model. Um, not, not so much that kind of scenario. So I would believe the more we can bundle, uh, the more we can create different type of service and support, then there is more value. So all this value is something that we exchange with the so-called margin, right? You want to earn more, uh, you can't just ask customer to pay you more. You need to give something in the returns. So that's something in the returns is what we call value. Uh, thank you, Shafiq. Yeah, okay. So first to you, Sachi. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks for that, Shafiq. Uh, Mr. Ko, actually, there are plenty of good questions from the floor today. So maybe I'm just going to pick a couple. Um, oh, and I think we, okay. we, yeah, we move on to like um, other segments of the business, right? So um, okay. one thing I noticed about your business and also there's this question from Victor is that uh, you have broadband services as part of your business line. But how does this actually work? Because you don't actually own the broadband infra. So how do you play in this space? Okay, so on the broadband parts, there is two portions. So one is actually we are offering the products from uh, telco like telecom or cellcom. So that is basically we are promoting their products and then we get commissions or incentive from them. So that's contribute up to our profits. And second part is that we realize um, in many cases, especially for commercial customers, sometimes uh, uh, they need something beyond the normal uh, broadband package like Unify maybe is still not good enough for them. For certain customers, they have several kind uh, situations whereby internet connectivity is actually critical to them. So they need the internet subscriptions to provide them with like uh, SLA, service level agreement. So in those areas, of course, um, uh, we will need to provide like the dedicated fiber optic or uh, fiber optic pair to them so that um, uh, we will be able to provide the service level agreement of minimum 99.5%. Uh, guarantee uptime for them. Then uh, in this kind of scenario, those customers, they will be able to, you know, um, 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 uh, hands-on or maybe they will be able to utilize their IT, ICT infrastructure much more better because they have uh, more mission critical things uh, and tasks that they need to do. Yeah, so this is the two parts. So one part we earn from the commissions, the other part is actually we provide the direct internet access. Uh, okay, got it. Thank you for that. And then there's this next question from Mike Ong, um, which is asking uh, for your broadband business, uh, are you focused in particular geographical areas? Uh, broadband is all within Malaysia, inside Malaysia only. Okay. Uh, within Malaysia, do you focus in any region or are you uh, nationwide? Uh, nationwide, including Sabah, Sarawak. So uh, basically, as long as there is connections, there is coverage, and uh, we are more than happy to uh, offer our, our services. Okay, so we've tackled that. Um, and actually, uh, as I was thinking about this, I, I actually have a question on the broadband side of things, right? Because um, in my mind, the broadband market should be very saturated by this point. I don't know what the statistics are, but uh, presumably uh, most people in Malaysia should already have broadband. So do you a lot more growth in this space or do you think it's kind of like saturated already? Um, a very, very good question. But I think one of the main challenges here is that we are very data hungry. So a lot of people, when the speed gets better, when the computer's uh, specification getting better and all these things, then we can become more and more data hungry, right? Because we are putting more and more applications uh, online for the crowd. Last time when internet speed is not fast enough, we do not so many things. But now we tend to do a lot of things online. So that's why data is never enough. And uh, I, I believe governments also aware of this. And you can see just around the corner. And in fact, globally, uh, many governments actually is roll out their initiative for the 5G. And our government is actually in the process of doing the same. So uh, as you can imagine, so so um, uh, this internet, uh, whether uh, like, like you say, uh, most of people already have, and where is the growth opportunity? So the growth opportunity that this is something like uh, always it will it will refresh. 
So today, maybe you are happy with 10 mat, for example. Later on, you think, I have 10 mat, so now I need 30 mat. After you use 30 mat already, we have new notebooks and so on. Maybe you want to go for 100 mat. So it's refreshing itself, correct or not? And at the same time, when 5G come out, then most likely you may all want to change uh, later on, maybe upgrade your phone, and, and, and that could bring us a device sales opportunity. And when you upgrade your phone, because you want to change your 4G or LTE uh, internet plans to 5G plan, for example. So these are the things that is actually, uh, in fact, uh, not just drive the telco industry, but it's actually drive the ICT industry as well. And the 5G, there's tons of uh, uh, interesting usage as well, uh, as whatever that we can see, especially on things like AI, big data, and so on. Uh, you need a reliable and faster connections. Yeah, so 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 to me is uh, uh would there be a sat saturation point? But um, it depends. If we don't have any more new applications, we don't have any more new products. Then maybe people will be happy with whatever current speeds that we have. But as long as we see new trends, new things going on, like uh, in fact, like let's just talk about two years ago, three years ago, TikTok is not so popular. YouTube, you know, you know, somehow even a lot of people make short video. You know, basically people is doing YouTube. Then now maybe people are doing TikTok and so on. Now you try to imagine if you, uh, internet speed is very slow. Uh, it's only three G age and something like that. Now the TikTok may not be so funny already. You get what I mean? Yeah. So I think I think um long way to go. Long way to go. Um 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 because why? It is not only about Malaysia. This is a global initiative. Globally, everybody is uh, keep on coming out with new things. So this industry is a little bit different because it's not about uh, uh, Malaysia. It's not about who is the government. But at the same time, globally, it's transforming. Everybody come out something different, and 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 there are just new things. And and, and I, I think this is actually keep on. We are trying to uh, enable everybody will be able to do more, right? Yeah, with the new technology and so on. Okay, thanks for that, Mr. Ko. Um, traffic, maybe back to you. All right, so um, thirty percent of your profit of utilization is to use to expand your TS, right? But yes. for five percent of your revenue con contribute by commission from PM sales, right? So, do you plan to reduce your dependency with PM or like like what is the plan for that you? Oh, okay, okay. That, that 45% of TM is only our segmentation on the services as well as devices uh, repair, which is by revenue is contributing about 2%. So uh, uh, on that part, is actually uh, TM is a major one. And uh, I, I don't see that it's actually a, considered a dependency on, on TM because we have various other types of uh, uh, options available. But uh, we have been working with TM for a very long time, if I'm not mistaken, since year 2003. I think we have more than 10 to almost 20, uh, 10 over years to 20 years kind of working experience with them. Uh, they are Malaysia's largest telecommunication company. And uh, I, I think this is still something that is um, uh, good to work on. And uh, in, in fact, uh, why we say we are not 100% dependent on them because uh, we have to look at um, TM uh, is not contributing 45% of my total uh, sales or revenue or profit. It's only for that segmentation. So I still have my ICT section, uh, 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 which is consisting about 98%. So from, if we look at from this angle, I think everything is quite uh, well um, uh, positioned and also managed. Um, uh, I believe we, we need to have connectivity because uh, sometimes uh, without connectivity, uh, the customer experience is incomplete. So that is why why we involved in offering TM products. Uh, one of the reasons is because uh, um, uh, many customers, they, they, they need to go online. So um, being able to work with TM, then we can actually uh, deliver a more complete uh, customer experience. Okay. So it's not... Yeah, <laughs> understand. Right. Uh, so next question is uh, about retail, right? So I'm fans of your IT work, um, and I just interested to know like uh, you create two brand store, right? Which is IT World and Blue. So why you take such decision? Why you separate this and not make it like all in one retail solution? Oh, oh okay, okay. Uh, very good questions. Uh, um, actually, um, uh, 
uh, IT world, uh, when we set up that time, it's actually primarily to uh, promote some Apple products. And uh, of course, we also have other brands of product inside there. So IT world is like more uh, brands uh, specific so that you can actually experience a, a particular product uh, more in depth. Now, Guru, on the other hand, we are promoting more to mass market. Uh, we actually uh, position it inside the Aeon, uh, for example. So the product range inside is actually more meant for general consumers. And uh, some customers, they want to compare multi-brands. So take for example, if you go to HP store, you can only uh, check out all the HP product, all the models of HP. But if you want to see HP product next to a uh, Acer product, for example, so you may not be able to like have a side by side kind of comparisons. So that is why we're creating two different retail format. So one is multi-brand store, one is more towards brand specialty store. So one is the group is for more general public uh, kind of intentions. And then whereby IT world is more on brand specifics. So that is uh, a, a little bit of differentiations that we are trying to create. Understand. Right, passing the floor to you, Sajin. Okay, uh, thanks, Shafiq. Um, I'm just going through the questions from the audience, right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ko, because I'm mindful it's also getting a bit late. Maybe we just run through a few of these and then we uh, jump to another section shortly. Um, there's this question from Boss Nick, um, which is basically asking, is your business model similar to Sengheng? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, we are not the same as Sengheng. I think Sengheng is a very prominent uh, retailer in Malaysia. Uh, although we have about uh, 80 uh, outlets nationwide and things like that, but we are not really a retailer because um, our uh, physical store revenue uh, contribution to us take last year as an example is only about 15%. And um, our last portion actually on the commercial. So we are an IT company. So retail to me is a frontier uh, of a uh, touch point for us to uh, uh, um, um, keep in touch with various different customers. So some customers may receive our uh, retail, buy something, and later on, maybe when the company wants something, they can also talk to us. So retail is just our sales frontier to meet up with all the various different customers. So we are not really a retailer, and uh, I don't think we have the intention to convert ourselves to become a retailer like Sing Heng. Yeah. So I think that is different. We are ICT uh, technology provider. Uh, we, are, we are playing our role as a technology provider. Whereby I think Sengheng is very prominent um, as a retailer. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, and then along a similar uh, line, there is this uh, also follow-up question from Bosnik, um, who must be a fan of Sengheng or something. But uh, basically, he, <laughs> uh, I, I guess... Um, asking or suggesting, do you have plans to maybe uh, merge all your brands under one um, because it might lead to better kind of like brand building and ability to create higher margins by having one brand? Um, you kind of touched on this already. I don't know whether you have anything else to add. Um, for the time being, uh, not so much. Um, I think SNS is a, a, a company. It's a company brand. Uh, in which we have been serving our commercial customer and all the various type of customer. And uh, IT World, on the other hand, and Guru, on the other hand, is more on e-commerce as well as the uh, uh, retail. So uh, uh, we don't see much uh, conflict of interest on this. And uh, sometimes the smaller format uh, is served different type of purpose. Uh, our intention is try to create more uh, personalized uh, experience to the customer. Uh, by making the format uh, smaller so that it won't be like uh, uh, too headache for the customers. Uh. So that is uh, something that I think uh, what we intend to do. Yeah. Thank you so much, okay. uh, All right, got it. Um, so I think we've covered most of the general business questions. Uh, so just maybe shifting gears again to maybe the growth side of the business, right? Because uh, in, in SNS's case, um, you're going for an IPO and you're raising funds. So I think uh, what I noticed was the largest part of the funds that you're raising is for the DAS business. Is this to buy devices or is there any other component to, to this money that you're raising for DAS? Uh, yes, correct. Uh, this is to buy devices. Um, so uh, uh, as I shared with now, so we, uh, our current direct subscription is actually with uh, the government agency. So um, uh, let's say some of the government agency, if they want 
to sign up the DAS subscriptions with us, then we will be buying these this, uh, 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 devices and then um, uh, provide under the DAS model for the customers. Okay, got it. Um, let's see. Uh, and, and for this, do you already have kind of like a target users uh, or target customers for the, the new DAS products you're planning to bring in or uh, you're bringing it in first and then you're looking to, to sell? No, no. Uh, we, we won't stock up the product and wait for sale. Then uh, that is not um, uh, not very ideal because um, uh, as I shared just now, actually a lot of DAS customer, they are... They are their what they call uh, requirements or their, 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 their needs is different, their objective is different. So uh, we don't want um, to, to be in that situation. It's like I force you to buy that things or, or you know, I promote that things uh, uh, in a very harsh, uh, I mean, uh, hard sale manner because uh, I have the products. But rather, yeah. we, we try to see what are the things that you want, then we, we then only we go and purchase it, then uh, use the DAS model for uh uh, for you to subscribe or or customers that you if you want to do the um, outright purchase uh, we are more than happy to support that as well yeah okay. because so I think you, the you are... and sell model is more towards on retail part so um, uh, it's not for DAS I, I think if we stop kit and sell for DAS it's, it, it, it may not work very well so stop kit and sell is for retail right when you enter a shop, you want to buy a printer, you want to buy ink, you want to buy a smartphone, uh, something like that. Then the the the, the stock availability is there, so that uh, you can you can buy. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, so then actually there is uh this question from, uh, Rondi. Uh, maybe a bit off top. Uh, not to say off topic, but just focus on the growth side of things, right? Um, so post IPO, do you have any plans or uh, intention to explore? Because from my understanding, the IT distribution space is still somewhat fragmented. Uh, M and A, uh, you you mean mer merger and acquisitions? Correct. Yes. Oh, I see. I see. Wow, this is a very interesting question. Um, um, for the time being, uh, we we don't have any uh, concrete plans on any M and A. We we don't have. But uh, um, I'm not too sure. Maybe in the coming future, you know, after we listed, maybe there is some uh, strategic partners that we can work with, or or something like that. Then, then maybe by that time. But I, I, I uh, for 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 the time being, for currently, I don't think uh, we have any M and A plans uh, uh, in our in our planning uh, right now. Yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, maybe in okay. the future depends. <laughs> All right, got it. Sounds good. Um, I pass it back to Shafiq. Uh, the floor is yours for some questions. Right. So let's change the gear a bit to finance, right? Um, so there's a question from the floor. Uh, can you explain more about... Sorry, this is a different question. All right. What was the driver for the large revenue growth in FY 2022? 54% uh, of YY is huge. So yeah. Okay, uh, David, this is a very great question. Um, actually, um, uh, uh, of course, uh, one of the main price factors is uh, uh, because of COVID. So during the last two years, actually, we can see uh, the digital transformation is being accelerated. That means suddenly there's a lot of digital users. So that phenomenon means to say like, you know, last time maybe we didn't take three years or five years to achieve this kind of result. But suddenly, uh, Within one to two years, everybody actually, uh, you know, for various reasons, they start to buy new devices. Uh, you know, uh, various different organizations, some of them also help to come in to support buying devices and then a sponsor to the students of B40 family, for example. So now, um, 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 so we can see for the last two years, um, um, the drive factor is because of digital transformation, more acquisition of technology into it due to pandemic. So that is for the last two years. And mainly this kind of product is got to do with like uh, notebooks, PC, and smartphones, uh, tablets, something like that. So that is on the uh, consumer part. So, um, and of course, maybe I can even uh, elaborate a little bit is that uh, what about this year and next year? 
So um, um, the, the momentum of growth, uh, I think uh, we will be able to enjoy in the sense that uh, we are seeing a lot of, of good and positive outlook in the ICT industry because certainly you have a lot of digital users. And when this year the economy opens back, people go back to work and uh, they realize that the equipment that they have in the office, for example, maybe it's not so updated, it's a little bit updated or even obsolete. Because what happened last two years, actually a lot of businesses and organizations that temporarily you know, cut down on their spending, and including ICT spending for the last two years because uh, of the uncertainty of NCO and so on. So they temporarily reduce spending. But come to this year and next year, so what happened is like, now suddenly a lot of company they 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 they, they start to uh, uh, operate their business and so on, uh, they start to buying. So we are now like we have a two years of delay sales into uh, this year as well as next year. So I believe SMS will be able to enjoy the benefit of the the growth uh, because uh, we have more than seventy percent on the commercial channel. So this will continue uh, to help us to. Uh, expand further. Uh, I believe what happened in the last two years is just some baby step uh, uh, of our next giant journey. Yeah, thank you. Safi. All right, another interesting question from the floor. Uh, what are the functions that will increase and maintain the company's profit margin? We saw that revenue increased quite significantly why what, but margin did not go up. Yeah, so where's the um, function that will um, yeah, uh, because uh, as far as ICT industry is concerned, uh, including most of our competitors, uh, most of us actually we only have a uh, uh, thinner margin. Uh, we only have single digit margin in the ICT industry. So what will happen is that uh, you see uh, 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 the ICT player, uh, regardless who we are, um, uh, let's say take Apple for example, iPhone. Uh, the price is already being set globally by Apple, right? Uh, Malaysia, the food is selling how much? Singapore selling how much? Thailand selling how much, for example. Then we are the reseller, then we, we have our margin, which is more or less predetermined by Apple's. Then the distributor will have their margin, which is more or less also predetermined by the brand principles like Apple's. So because of that, our margin is more or less fixed. So we, we, we can't uh, increase our margin just by selling more expensive. Right, because the customer will know how much is the price for the product. Let's say the iPhone, let's say is five thousand. If I sell to you five thousand five hundred, you won't buy, because you know it. Hey, this this is more expensive. So how we are going to earn extra margin is by offering extra things that is valuable for customer. So what is the extra thing that is valuable for customer? Take for example, it could be some bundling. Like I say, maybe we can bundle with like a uh, 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 extended warranty, care pack, and something like that. Then the customer, let's say, from one year to extend to three years, for example, then we make extra margin on the service plan, for example. Uh, um, so to me, uh, to increase the profit margin is actually about service. Because ICT is a services industry. It's not purely a box selling industry. So box selling means to say you're just selling the product as a box. Um, that you earn the basic margin. So if you are, can add on uh, uh, more things to it, then you, you tend to be able to improve your margin matters. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, and this is a favorite question from Mr. La, right? So what is your stances of paying out dividend? Oh, okay. Um, uh, for the time being, we don't have a fixed dividend policies. Uh, although for the past few years, we do pay out uh, uh, dividends. And uh, I think for the coming years, it will be depends on the uh, profitability as well as our cash flow and so on. So um, then only we will decide whether we are we will have uh, dividend or not. So I mean, uh, um, as a conclusion for the time being, we don't have a fixed dividend policy yet. All right. So Sachi. Uh okay, it's traffic. Uh, Mr. Ko, I'm just looking at the questions. I'm, I'm mindful of time. Uh, we've actually gone on for an hour and a half already. Uh, and I'm just looking whether we've actually... Yeah, so it's been a very interesting chatting with you and time has flown. I also didn't realize. Um, so actually, I, I noticed that uh, we touched on this earlier in one of the previous questions, uh, the fact that the profit margin is relatively low at 3.2%. I believe you've answered this already because uh, you said that 
uh, in the ICT distribution space, prices are controlled, right? There's only so much you can play with. Um, yeah, 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 sorry. correct. So because um, uh, the, the, the global pricing, uh, uh, I, I think most of the brand they have this, uh, um, because uh, in ICT, most of the products that we have is from all the global ICT brands they have been heard, uh, hear about. People like Intel, AMD, you know, Microsoft, or HP, all these companies, they have certain uh, pricings already. So it, it's not very much like up to the ICT player uh, to sell whatever price that we want. Am I right? Yeah. So and this industry is very open and it's very transparent. So it, it doesn't happen that way. So almost everybody know how much the price worth. If today I give you a model of a uh, uh, proper brand notebook or whatever brands, uh, HP, Dell, or whatever, you easily can Google online chat and you will roughly know how much the number worth, isn't it? So that is why the, the, the margin for all the ICT players is more or less the same. So it wouldn't be able to like, or suddenly he will be able to make like 30% margin or 50% margin. It, it doesn't happen that way. So that is why uh, uh, um, in our industry is quite norm. Our upfront margin is already single digit. So if we want to earn extra, uh, then we have to provide our service. So, you know, uh, the service will bring you extra uh, revenue as well as profit margin. Yes. Okay. And then um, I think this was this is actually a very good question, Mr. Ko. So maybe we just take this as the last question. Um, uh, I think to summarize the question, uh, the question is basically asking actually today, uh, what do you, can you share your rough split of uh, revenue between government, MNCs, SMEs, and maybe retail as a separate segment, right? The way you would see your business. Uh, we don't have segmentation by customer. We only have segmentations by the channel that we have. So, um, government side, uh, we uh, is actually inside our commercial channel as well. So, uh, our IPO proceeds, uh, uh, we allocate uh, for the government is thirty point nine million of uh, to to grow the DAS segments. So, government is one of the targeted customer. It doesn't mean that we will only offer for government. So, as what we uh, shared just now, uh, customer like for education institutions. Uh, MNC company or even PLC company, uh, we can uh, as long as there is no risk involved, uh, very minimum risk, then uh, that could be also uh, be our uh, target customer. Now, uh, um, having to say this, but you have to look at um, uh, our uh, entire uh, planning or our proceeds. So um, uh, our fundraise is about uh, uh, ninety million, uh, ninety million plus. But uh, actually, our last year, a uh, uh, three years uh, uh, PAT is already about there. So, so our, our this uh, what we call retained earnings will be utilized to support the growth of other customer segments that the uh, 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 your your audience asks us now, like um, yeah. the, to grow the SME segments, to grow the large corporate segments, and all other customer segments like retail and so on. So they are not being neglected. So we are not really uh, changing our focus to become a, uh, a project based company. Uh, uh, not really like that. But uh, we are seeing certain segment that is a potential growth. So um, that's why we allocate some portion of it. And the other hardest portion is actually utilizing our existing resources to grow it. Yeah, so that is actually uh, um, uh, uh, the strategy. So uh, I, I think the audience actually see well uh, quite clearly. Uh, thanks for the good question anyway. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. I, I think, uh, Mr. Ko, with that, we've actually answered all the audience questions. So. Uh, I, I want to thank you so much for taking uh, more than an hour and a half to speak to us, uh, especially during this very busy period. Um, maybe if I just pass it to you for any final remarks that you have for the audience. Uh... Uh, sure, sure. Um, uh, Sachi, as well as all the uh, uh, Shafiq and uh, all the audience, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having me for tonight's sessions. And thank you so much. Uh, I, I'm sorry if I speak too much. I, I, I wasn't know that uh, we already spent one and a half hours over here. But uh, to me, I really enjoy uh, being able to share what we have. Uh, as I share uh, uh, just now, um, even though last year uh, we, we achieved our sales revenue of 1.1 billion, uh, but according to the IMR report, that is only 1.47% of the market share. And I believe um, having only 1.47% of, uh, of the market share, SNS still have tremendous opportunity to grow. So whatever we achieved the last two years or three years is just some baby step for our next giant journey. So uh, we are very new to the capital market. We don't as uh, uh, this is our first IPO. Uh, why we want to go for IPO is because 
we need i we believe our company have reached a stage we need to have a larger platform so that we will be able to extend our reach to uh, acquire more uh, and new customer customer and ict industry is a service oriented industry so um talents to us is very important and we we believe um, um, we need to continue to train our workers, our employees, so that they will be more knowledgeable and so that they will be able to provide a better service and support to the customer. And in order to retain that, and this larger platform is important. And of course, the last objective is uh, you know, we will be able to access to some fundraising uh, from the capital markets uh, so that we can continue to expand uh, our businesses by looking at the very positive outlook of ICT uh, industry. So um, with all this, uh, thank you so much, uh, Sachi, again, and Shafiq. Thank you so much for all your time and thank you for having me tonight. Correct. It's been a pleasure hosting you, Mr. Ko. Um, maybe just for the recap for the benefit of the audience, actually a couple of key dates. Uh, your application closing is on the 18th of uh, August, so people have one more week to apply. And then the listing itself is on the 2nd of September. And... Um, there's actually plenty of well wishes and uh, recognition from the audience and everyone wishing you uh, what on your IPO subscription. Um, and we wish you all the best, uh, Mr. Ko, and uh, thank you so much for your time. And I think let's sure, wrap sure, up at sure. that point. Thank you so much. Stay safe, everyone. Right. Thank you. Thank Good night, you. everyone. Bye. Bye.